and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is a blue collar wine show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I'm super stoked about this episode because I have run across a Bordeaux that got 97 points in Decanter Magazine. Okay? $13. So I'm really, really stoked to try this wine. Really am. And I'm wondering. What I'm going to use. Ah, got it. Didn't have a dump bucket there. So, very stoked. This is Chateau Bordeaux 2019 Bordeaux. And this rolls in at $13. There you go. 97 points to Cantor Magazine. Now, as you guys know, I'm not, I don't buy into points all the time, but it is exciting when you see that. That's pretty cool. And I have a lot of respect for critics that, uh, you know, uh, Judge Wines, um, they do the same thing I do, so I have great respect for them, and I'm very curious about this. Now, the cool, the, the thing about Bordeaux that you got to remember, there's two styles. Uh, you could go old world style Bordeaux, which is kind of what I prefer when I'm going to Bordeaux. But then Bordeaux, and then you can have what they call uh, a more a new world style Bordeaux, which, according to a lot of people, Robert Parker Jr. was guilty of kind of moving these guys, motivating these guys to make more New World style unctuous reds from Bordeaux to get the big scores from the wine advocate. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but it certainly seems like a lot of people feel that way about him. He's retired now. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Parker. He did a lot of good things for the wine world. But that's kind of the, the, the image that people have of him, is that he kind of got people to get the big scores they had to make more unctuous style wines. So I'm very curious about this, whether we get that or not, more unctuous style wines. Let's look at the color. Definitely Garnet. <laughs> Definitely Garnet. Very dark. A little bit of a violet color to it as well. I don't know if you can see all those details on the, on the screen there, but there you go. So it's a darker wine. Let's see what we get on the nose. Super stoked about this. Definitely, I get plums and currants, which is interesting. Don't often get plums. This might have a little more Merlot in it. Does not give the breakdown. There you go. A little tobacco coming through, and then a slight, which I like, a little green edge, a little vegetation on the nose. Yeah, almost in the green bell pepper sort of Brussels sprout asparagus. But not strong, not strong. Definitely plums, currants, a little poisonberry coming through as well. Yeah, a little a red flowers. Let's see what we get on the palate. Super stoked about this. Tightly wound. I didn't have it open that long. It's only been open about a half hour. A little decanting would be necessary for this one. But this has some depth to it. It has minerality. It has current notes. A little bit of leather. A little bit of tobacco. There's a spiciness to it on the back side. Good flow across the palate. Like I said, right now it's a little wound up. It hasn't fully opened yet, um, but I can tell this is going to open up. What I like about this wine, what I like about this Bordeaux, it's $13. It shows all the characteristics that an old world palate would like about Bordeaux. And it has a little bit, just a little bit of new world love to it. That current notes, the plum comes through, red flowers, spice, but definitely minerality, uh, definitely uh, solid tannins, there's approachable, very approachable right now. It's 2019, so it's kind of a baby. But I'm telling you right now, with a little bit of air uptime on this baby, with a little decanting, you're going to be in for a treat. Somewhat chewy, which I like. A little chewiness on this one. Solid, solid Bordeaux. I'm impressed. 97 points, a pretty solid score for for a Bordeaux in this price range. Um, 
I don't use a point system to do grades. I'm going to go straight up A- minus on this. I think it's a very, very solid Bordeaux. It has ageability. It, it has uh, depth. Good structure. Very approachable now, though. Spicy. I would not age it longer than five years. Definitely not longer than five years. But the, the, the finish keeps going on and on, which is very cool. And that herbaceousness comes through. You get a little green bell pepper, a little asparagus coming through underneath a little green bean action as well. Coming through, it's not a prominent part of this wine, but it is definitely lurking underneath the tannins and the fruit and the minerality. Very solid wine, A minus. I'm glad I was able to try it. Um, very excited about this wine. I'm going to invest it in a few bottles, put them away for four to five years, see how they develop, because I think they'll turn out well, and I'm, I'm going to try it later, and hopefully on my next episode, I can just tell you how it opens up. Because again, once again, just real quickly, I try to drink them, how's a consumer going to drink them, and most consumers consume a wine within an hour after opening it. So, I know a lot of you decant, I know that. Miles, I know you decant. Um, you know, Alan, I know you decant. All these guys that watch these, I know there's decanters around here, and they do that. But a lot of you don't, and I understand, that's okay. You're going to like this straight out of the bottle, but you're going to like it even better if you let it breathe a little bit. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I'm so excited about this. Uh, I appreciate all your support. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.